And welcome to this week's edition of The Mountain Gardener, your host, Ken Lane, here every week talking about the landscapes of northern Arizona. And what a beautiful spring it is. It finally warmed up and it just feels good now. In fact, I've been driving around the county and at least I have taken some, some afternoon drives and the wildflowers, there's a super bloom going on. There is things that just gorgeous. You folks over in the Verde Valley, that's Sedona, Camberti, Cottonwood, that, that whole area, the Penstemon. If you're seeing an orange or red flower that's showing up out in fields, in between the drive, in between the highways, uh, along the, the roads, up the hillsides, those are Penstemon. Penstemon wheat, Arizona's famous for our Penstemon. It was a tall plant Maybe, oh, not quite tall, I guess just below knee high. And it's got these tubular shaped flowers all up and down the stems. And so these are a hummingbird magnet. Oh my gosh, hummingbirds love these. And they're blooming up uh, where they're migrating. So hummingbirds are, actually all birds are migrating right now. But hummingbirds specifically use pinstamen as a nutrient source as an as a energy boost to keep them going. And so that's one of their favorites. They just cannot, in fact, you'll actually see the males fighting over pinstemon flowers. And they're so easy to grow. And they'll grow throughout all of Northern Arizona. Uh, we've got probably four or five different colors. They come in reds and pinks and whites and purples uh, and, and hummingbirds like them all. But the ones you're seeing blooming right now in the wild, that's Penstemon over in the, the Verde Valley, that side of the county. Down towards uh, Wickenburg, it is California poppies. Oh, you're seeing hills of orange flowers, just big flowers the size of silver dollars, up about and just, just short of a, a foot high. And just, the, I think every seed germinated this this spring, and they're all blooming right now. It's, it's glorious. And again, so easy to grow here in the mountains of Arizona. It's just, it's just a, it's a bulletproof plant. Every yard in, at, at, up in the mountains of Arizona should have some California poppies. They're just that easy to grow. And so you can grow them by seed or by plants, both of them. Out towards Prescott Valley, Mayor Dewey, uh, that area out that 69 corridor, you're seeing lupins. So purple flowers are, are starting to bloom. Actually, I saw some of those down towards Wickenburg as well. So the lupins are, are a wild, just kind of shorter flower. Again, easy to, easy to grow. Full sun, give it some wind. You know, kind of kick dirt at it. It's still going to bloom for you. And so very easy to, in fact, we've got uh, several lup lupins here in, L-U-P-I-N, lupin. Uh, that, that are here at the garden center. Some of them, a new variety is this tall, big, beefy. I mean, just, it almost looks prehistoric. It's huge. I mean, it's beautiful. And it's it's an orangey red color. It's, it's like a red hot poker, only in lupin form. Just beautiful. And so these are wild flowers that you can grow here in the mountains of Arizona. And if you started your seed back in January, February, generally I'm, I'm doing shows, I'm writing articles on how to do wildflowers. And you start those by seed typically, and you sprinkle it out in the yard and then they start to come up. Now, if you did that back two months ago when it was still chilly, cold, rainy, snowy, that's what wildflower seed really like. They're starting to come up. They might not quite be in bloom, but they're starting to actively grow and they'll be blooming pretty quickly. And then they'll come up in waves. So as you're doing wildflower seed, you sort of want a mixture, a blend of different kinds of seeds. And so you get this wave of, let's say, pinstem comes up and, and then the lupins and then the, the poppies. And then the, they just kind of have this wave after wave after wave of, of flowers that will bloom in your backyard. And so wildflower patches are very easy to grow. Now, wildflower seed, they need to have this freeze-thaw cycle. So if you want to start some of those now in your backyard, very doable, but we're past the freeze-thaw cycle. So you're going to have to do that manually. And you can do that yourself. Buy your seed, get a good quality seed. We've got four or five, I think four, four varieties. We've got a poppy mix, a deer and rabbit resistive mix. 
an Arizona mix, which is just bulletproof. This is all the all the ones we just mentioned. That's what's in that mix. And then a, a Rocky Mountain mix, kind of the bigger showier varieties, but might need a little bit of water, kind of really keep them going and blooming beautifully. So we've got four mixes. If you're buying any one of those, take them home, put them in the freezer. This seems weird, but trust me, this really works. Put them in the freezer for a couple of days and then bring them back out. Let them thaw for a day. Do that one more time and then bring it back out and then plant them and they will germinate almost immediately. I mean, now we're talking within, uh, within a week, 10 days, you're going, whoa, the seed are starting to germinate. The reason wildflowers need that freeze cycle is a lot of the seed have very thick outer hulls. It's a defensive mechanism so that if they don't get moisture this year, they can, be, they can hold on until the next year. It's a longevity thing. And so by freezing, they, it cracks open that hull so that the seed inside can actually pierce through that outer shell and come, can, can germinate. If, if it doesn't have that, you'll tend to, it just sits there until the next year when it does freeze and thaw and cycle. So just kind of a little insider tip. We've got a handout on that that can help you. Not, not pushing, really, I wanted for this, what are you seeing blooming? And so you've, uh, the trees you're seeing bloom. Right now, there's a bright, bright pink tree. Uh, lots of them in Prescott Valley, I notice. Uh, that Dewey area. Lots of them out Williamson Valley area, all the way up towards Talking Rock, Inscription Canyon. Those those beautiful, uh, like fuchsia pink flowers. A tree about 15, nope, no more than 20 feet. It's a short tree. In bright colored flowers, that is red bud. All of them, they're all red buds. There's different flavors, different colors, different varieties, different, but they're all red buds, a shorter tree. And when it's done blooming for the next two, three weeks, it'll put on this beautiful heart-shaped flower. It's the prettiest little leaf. It's a nice little shade tree. So it'd be perfect for shading a, a patio. It's pretty enough to be a decorative accent tree. And the newer varieties that are coming out, we probably have 10 varieties of red bud. Yeah, we have the Western red bud, which is the native one that grows wild, but we have the Eastern red bud. That's when your grandparents grew, kind of a lighter pink. Then we have all these brighter colors, Oklahoma, uh, forest pansy, ruby rain, uh, ruby raindrop, rainflow. I forget. There's so many, I don't even know all the names, <laughs> but there's, they're beautiful and they're all equally hardy. So they're very robust. They take our wind, our sun, our terrible soil, and they just bloom every spring. You can count on them. Right after that, about Mother's Day, you're going to see, uh, well, no, before that, you'll have the crab apples will start blooming. That's next. That's probably next week. And then you've got uh, locusts, uh, purple robe locusts. There's a tree that will start blooming at Mother's Day that has these beautiful, like, wisteria shaped flowers that just drapes down from the tree. So we are famous for our blooming plants, especially our blooming trees, our wildflowers, and our shrubs. So the, uh, the uh, uh, lilacs started blooming this week. They're all over town. You're seeing this beautiful purple, blue, mine is white, just started blooming this week. Uh, lilacs are amazing flowering plants, shrubs. They can be anywhere from hip high to just above head high. So they vary in size and they vary in color. The, the flower color can be different. The foliage is always the same. It's always bright green. Just this rich, nice, full shrub. And then its fall color is kind of, kind of aspen gold. So it has a lot of seasonality to it, but it's most famous in the spring for that fragrance, that lilac fragrance is so stunning. And so I've got, uh, I've got full-sized, so common lilacs that are your, your grandparents' group. Then I've got some miniature ones, some bloomerangs and uh, Miss Kim and Canadian. And there's all these shorter ones where you don't need to prune them and take care of them. They just kind of grow without a lot of care. That's what a lilac will do. They're very drought hardy. The animals seem to leave them alone. There's a lot going on. And you are in the thick of the planting season. Got a lot for you in this show. Be right back after this. 